Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are here to talk about some of the new releases coming out in August. I believe this video is going to be coming out before I release my TBR for August. So I'm going to go ahead and reiterate what I said in that video and say that my ring light recently broke. I'm going to have to get a new one. And until that time, I don't really know what the lighting is going to look like in these videos. I kind of had to do a makeshift setup situation here. So I'm still roughly in the same location. I don't have a ring light directly on my face. I have my picture lights surrounding me, but I'm not really sure what it's going to do. I'm going to try to edit it to hopefully ensure that the lighting is somewhat decent. So I apologize in advance but hopefully it's not too terribly noticeable or distracting or just too terrible in general. And just as a reminder the books that I'm going to talk to you about today it is not meant to be a comprehensive list of all of the books coming out in August. Rather these are a list of books that are on my radar or they are books that I think you will want on your radar. And because I don't know terribly much about these books I will be reading the blurbs or synopses that I find on Goodreads or Amazon to give you an idea of what these books are about so that you can make the educated decision on whether or not you want to add them to your TBR. As per usual I have 20 new releases to to talk to you about today. So we are going to go ahead and just jump right in starting with the first Tuesday in August, which actually just happens to be the first of August. And the first book that I want to talk to you about today is going to be The Hundred Loves of Juliet by Evelyn Skye. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a contemporary romance, but I believe there's going to be a speculative twist to it. It follows our main character, Helene, and she dreamed of the perfect man when she was young. And so she would fill her notebooks with stories about him and about love in its purest form. But after a messy divorce, she has let go of such naive fantasies. She has moved to a small town in Alaska. We love a good small town Alaska romance. I mean, simple wild, am I right? Where she is ready to write her novel and build a new life without romance. Fate has other plans though. Helene soon meets Sebastian Montague, a handsome fisherman who is her invented hero made flesh down to the most idiosyncratic details. How can a man she created possibly exist in the real world? While Helene tries to discover the truth behind his existence, Sebastian is determined to keep the truth from her, for he is a man scarred by serial tragedy, hiding a secret that has broken his heart time and time again. Yet the shadows of the past emerge, endangering Helene and Sebastian's future before it even begins and it becomes clear that it won't be easy to forge a new ending to the greatest love story of all time. So I wanted to mention that because it just sounds like it's going to be really sweet and poignant. It obviously is supposed to be some type of retelling of Romeo and Juliet, which if you really know the true story of Romeo and Juliet, it's not all that romantic, but I'm willing to see what Evelyn's guy can do with this story. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep it on your radar for August 1st. Also coming out on the first is The Connellys of County Down by Tracy Lange. Now Tracy Lange wrote We Are the Brennans, which was a family drama and I have no doubt this is going to be the same. This was actually a selection on Book of the Month in July. So they did like a pre-release option of this story. So you may have already grabbed it. This follows our main character, Tara Connolly, who is released from prison after serving 18 months on a drug charge. And she knows rebuilding her life at 30 years old won't be easy. No money and no prospects. She returns home to live with her siblings who are both busy with their own problems. Her brother, a single dad, struggles with the ongoing effects of a brain injury he sustained years ago. And her sister's fragile facade of calm and order is cracking under the burden of big secrets. Life becomes even more complicated when the cop who put her in prison keeps showing up unannounced, leaving Tara to wonder what he wants from her now. While she works to build a new career and hold her family together, Tara finds a chance at love in the most unlikely place. But when the Connolly secrets start to unravel and threaten her future, they almost face their worst fears and come clean or risk losing each other forever. So yes, you definitely have a strong family drama going on here. The main character has just been released from prison. She's trying to rebuild her life, but there's a lot going on with her family that could prevent her from doing that. I actually think it sounds really beautiful and poignant, probably on the harder hitting side. I love, of course, a good character driven story story, a lot of that drama, that angst, those complex character dynamics. I personally don't really know why I didn't pick it up from Book of the Month. I just don't think it was what I was hoping or wanting to see from Book of the Month at that time. But I do think that this is one that I will keep on my radar and will possibly add it to my TBR for the future. Also on the first is one that I am personally very hyped for. It is Jillian McAllister's newest release called Just Another Missing Person. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was such a unique thriller that dealt with the concept of time travel and I just really enjoyed it. It was fast paced. It was fun and I had a really good time. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what more Jillian McAllister can do. 22 year old Livia has been missing for one day and counting. She was last seen on CCTV entering a dead end alley and not coming back out again. Julia, the detective heading up the search for Olivia, thinks she knows what to expect. A desperate family, a ticking clock, and long hours away from her husband and daughter. But she has no idea just how close to home this case is going to get. Because the criminal at the heart of the disappearance has something she never expected. His weapon isn't a gun or a knife. It's a secret, her worst one. And her family's safety depends on one thing. Julia must know 
not find out what happened to Olivia and must frame somebody else for her murder. If you find her, you will lose everything. What would you do? This clever and endlessly surprising thriller is laced with a smart look at family and motherhood and cements Jillian McAllister as a major talent in the world of suspense and a master of creating ethical dilemmas that show just how murky the distinction between right and wrong can be. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. It sounds like we are going to be following a detective who has to make a very difficult choice, probably that's going to be on the morally gray or downright wrong side. And I am certainly here for it. I'm excited for this one and I will absolutely be keeping my eye out for it on the first when it is released. Another one that I'm looking forward to that is coming out on the first is Gone Tonight by Sarah Pacannon. Sarah Pacannon is typically known for the books that she writes as a duo with Greer Hendricks. I've never read anything from her on her own, but I'm certainly willing to give her a shot. I did talk about this in my book of the month predictions. So I'm not going to read the whole entire synopsis again here, but I do believe that this is about a complicated mother and daughter dynamic. You have a mother and daughter who are very, very close. They think they know everything about each other, but the mother, it sounds like is holding some deep secrets. And when her daughter is trying to get more freedom and is trying to go and live her life, her mother does not want that to happen. So her mother kind of tightens the reins. And it does sound like both the mother and daughter are going to have to be very deceptive to one another in order to kind of like get what they want to happen. So I'm all about reading about complicated mother daughter dynamics. So again, this one comes out on the first and I'm excited to see what Sarah Pacannon can do with it. Anne Patchett's newest release, Tom Lake, is also coming out on the first. I have never read anything by Anne Patchett, but I do believe that she writes literary fiction type stories. This is set in the spring of 2020. Laura's three daughters return to the family's orchard in northern Michigan. While picking cherries, they beg their mother to tell them the story of Peter Duke, a famous actor with whom she shared both a stage and a romance years before at a theater company called Tom Lake. As Laura recalls the past, her daughters examine their own lives and relationship with their mother and are forced to reconsider the world and everything they thought they knew. Tom Link is a meditation on youthful love, married love, and the lives parents have led before their children were born. It explores what it means to be happy even when the world is falling apart. As in all of her novels, Anne Padgett combines compelling narrative artistry with piercing insights into family dynamic. The result is a rich and luminous story told with profound intelligence and emotional subtlety that demonstrates once again why she is one of the most revered and acclaimed literary talents working today. So yes, it definitely sounds like it's going to be more on the literary side. Another family drama with complex character dynamics. This certainly sounds like it could be worth the read. So this is another one coming out on the first. Also on the first is what sounds like will be a cute little rom-com. It's called Roommate Pact by Allison Ashley. The proposition is simple. If ER nurse Claire Harper and her roommate firefighter Graham Scott are still single by the time they're 40, they'll take the proverbial plunge together as friends with benefits. Maybe it's the wine, but in the moment, Claire figures the pact is a safe enough deal considering she hasn't had much luck in love and he's in no rush to settle down. Besides, there's no way she could ever really fall for Graham in his thrill-seeking ways, not after what happened to her father. Just as things begin to heat up way before the proposed deadline, Graham's injured in a serious rock climbing accident and he needs Claire's help to heal. She'll do whatever it takes to nurse him back to health, even if it means moving into Graham's bed and putting up with his little dog who hates her. But with this no strings arrangement, taking a complicated turn, keeping for now from turning into forever isn't as easy as they planned. So I actually really love a good trope where one of the characters is made to care for the other characters. Oh my gosh, there's just something so swoony and intimate about that. So this actually has me really intrigued. It sounds like it's going to be a good fun time, but also, you know, with some more tender moments. So this is one that I'm putting on my radar for sure. Y'all, the first is a huge day for releases because I'm not done. We still have a couple more to go, including The Trap, which is Catherine Ryan Howard's newest release. Catherine Ryan Howard, I believe, typically writes suspense thrillers. I have never read anything by her, but she is certainly on my radar with some of her other books. And like I said, her newest release is now coming out on the first. One year ago, Lucy's sister, Nikki, left to meet friends at a pub in Dublin and never came home. The third Irish woman to vanish inexplicably in as many years, the agony of not knowing what happened that night has turned Lucy's life into a waking nightmare. So she's going to take matters into her own hands. Angela works as a civilian paper pusher in the missing persons unit, but wants nothing more than to be a fully fledged member of the Irish police force. With the official investigation into the missing woman stalled, she begins pulling on a thread that could break the case wide open and destroy her chances of ever joining the force. A nameless man drives through the night, his latest victim in the backseat. He's going to tell her everything from the beginning and soon she'll realize what you don't know can hurt you. So I don't know, that sounds kind of interesting. Like I said, I've never read anything by her before, but I'm certainly willing to give her a shot. So if you are a big fan of Catherine Ryan Howard's previous works, you might want to keep your eye out on this one, again, coming out on the first. And the final one that I want to talk to you about for the first is actually Elizabeth Acevedo's newest release, Family Lore. This is her adult debut, I believe. This again is another strong prediction that I have for Book of the Month. So I did talk about this in that Book of the Month prediction video. So I won't read through the synopsis again, but basically it is kind of exactly what it sounds. It follows three sisters and their complex relationships. It also follows two cousins in that family and what they're all going through. And the blurb says, from best-selling National Book Award winning author Elizabeth Acevedo comes her first novel for adults, the story of one Dominican American family told through the voices of its women as they await a gathering that will forever change their lives. So if you are a fan of Elizabeth Acevedo and you want to see what she could do with the adult age 
range. I would highly recommend keeping an eye out for this on the first when it is released. All right, finally moving on into the eighth, we have some heavy hitters coming out, especially within the thriller suspension genre. Of course, starting with None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I have grown very fond of Lisa Jewell over the past year. I have really enjoyed everything that I've read by her. And so I'm very excited to check out this newest release. This is again, another strong prediction I have for a book of the month. So this follows our main character, Alex Summers, and she is a pretty well-known podcaster. One day she is out celebrating her 45th birthday at a pub and she meets this woman named Josie who says she's also there celebrating her 45th birthday. And then a few days later, Alex actually runs into Josie again, but this time it's outside her children's school, which is a little bit weird, a little bit creepy, right? But Josie tells Alex that she's been listening to her podcast and she actually thinks that she herself would be a good subject for Alex's podcast. And I believe if I understand correctly, Alex actually does consider using Josie for her podcast. But the more that she finds out, she finds out that Josie's life is really strange and unusual, but she's going to continue on the podcast. And she kind of realizes that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets. And then one day Josie just kind of ups and disappears. Alex soon finds herself becoming the subject of her own podcast as she's trying to figure out like where Josie went, what is going on, all the secrets that she was hiding and things like that. So of course, I absolutely trust Lisa Jewell. I am hyped to read this newest release from her. And I for sure hope to see it on Book of the Month in August because I will snag that up very, very quickly. Another one that's coming out on the 8th and was actually released on Book of the Month in July is Dark Corners by Megan Golden. This is Megan Golden's newest release and it follows the same main character from The Night Swim who is Rachel Kroll, who is a true crime podcaster. And I believe this follows Rachel Kroll as she is helping the FBI investigate the disappearance of an Instagram influencer who went to meet with somebody who was in prison who was about to get released. But the police actually think that he was responsible for several murders. And this Instagram influencer was going to meet this guy and she disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to her. And when they're looking more into her life, they kind of feel like she doesn't exist. Like outside of Instagram, there is no trace of her whatsoever. And so the FBI are stumped and they get Rachel involved. And so Rachel ends up creating a fake Instagram account and she goes undercover at BuzzCon, which is this convention for influencers. And she's uncovering some really sinister things about the world of influencers. And I believe Rachel Kroll herself kind of gets targeted and she is in danger and is trying to fight for her life. So I trust Megan Golden completely at this point. I read Stay Awake a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. To me, that is my favorite one by her yet, but I did really enjoy The Night Swim. And so I'm excited to once again, follow the main character in this story. The synopsis of this sounds absolutely fascinating and I will certainly be picking it up as soon as I possibly can. Another one coming out on the 8th that I am really hyped for is Will Dean's newest release called The Last One. I read First Born by him and that one blew me away. I was not expecting to love that one as much as I did, but there were some fantastic twists in that story that really caught me off guard and took me by surprise. So he is now like an auto buy author for me. I have his backlist on my shelves that I do plan on reading soon. And so when I saw that he had a new release coming out, I was like, yes, add this to my TBR ASAP. This says, when Kaz steps on board the exclusive cruise liner RMS Atlantica, it's the start of a vacation of a lifetime with her new love, Pete. On their first night, they explore the ship, eat, dance, make friends. But when Kaz wakes the next morning, Pete is missing. And when she walks out into the corridor, all the cabin doors are open. To her horror, she soon realizes that the ship is completely empty. No passengers, no crew, nobody but her. The Atlantica is steaming into the mid-Atlantic and Kaz is the only person on board. That's just the beginning of the terrifying journey she finds herself trapped in this white knuckled mystery. Sold, say no more. I'm here for it. If you are interested in this story, if this sounds appealing to you, if you have read Will Dean in the past, this one is coming out on the 8th and I am very excited about it. Another one coming out on the 8th is The Hurricane Blonde by Hallie Sutton. I believe this is Hallie Sutton's debut and I was reading the synopsis for the Book of the Month prediction video and this one actually sounds really fascinating to me. So this is actually set in Hollywood and it follows our main character, Selma, who used to be a child actress, but she no longer is. Instead, she actually hosts the Six Feet Under Hollywood tour. She kind of takes tourists around and shows them where actresses have met like notable or untimely ends. And one day she is going around doing a tour and she finds an actual dead body. And what's really unsettling about this, aside from the fact that she's actually found a dead body, this dead body was actually found at the former home of her sister. Her sister was also a very well-known actress. She was known as the Hurricane Blonde because of her off-camera antics. And I guess her sister must have met an untimely end as well. And this dead body is found at Selma's sister's former address. But not only that, but this dead body looks remarkably like her sister and is actually wearing a hair clip that her sister was known to have worn. So this is kind of following Selma as she's trying to figure out who this girl is, who killed her, and all of that good stuff. And it says, the search for the truth will take Selma deep into the raw of Hollywood past and present, into her family's own long buried and terrible secrets. I just think that sounds absolutely phenomenal and fascinating. So I am very intrigued by this one. And if you are too, it comes out on the 8th. 
And the final one that I want to talk to you about that is coming out on the 8th is Canary Girls by Jennifer Schiavarini. I know that she is a pretty popular historical fiction author. The synopsis of this is quite lengthy, so I'm just going to read this blurb here. It says, Rosie the Riveter meets a league of their own in New York Times bestselling novelist Jennifer Schiavarini's lively and illuminating novel about the munitionettes who built bombs in Britain's arsenals during World War I, risking their lives for the war effort and discovering camaraderie and courage on the soccer pitch. Early in the Great War, men left Britain's factories and droves to enlist. Struggling to keep up production, arsenals hired women to build the weapons the military urgently needed. Be the girl behind the man behind the gun, the recruitment posters beckoned. Thousands of women, cooks, maids, shop girls, and housewives answered their nation's call. These munitionettes worked grueling shifts, often seven days a week, handling TNT and other explosives with little protective gear. So it sounds like we're going to be following some of these munitionettes, but it also is going to involve soccer in some form. So this is a combination of sports and World War II, like historical fiction, which is really interesting to me. So if that sounds like something that would be right up your alley, again, this comes out on the 8th. All right, moving on into the 15th, we have T. Kingfisher's newest release called Thornhedge. This definitely sounds like it's going to be very, very tale esque I think it's supposed to be a Sleeping Beauty retelling. It says, there's a princess trapped in a tower. This isn't her story. Meet Toadling. On the day of her birth, she was stolen from her family by the fairy. She grew up safe and loved in the warm waters of fairyland. Once an adult, though, the fae ask a favor of her to return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child. Simple, right? But nothing with fairies is ever simple. Centuries later, a knight approaches a towering wall of brambles where the thorns are as thick as your arm and as sharp as swords. He's heard there's a curse here that needs breaking, but it's a curse totaling will do anything to uphold. I know that T. King Fisher is a pretty popular author going around in the online bookish community, so if you really enjoy her writing and this sounds of interest to you, her newest release is coming out on the 15th. Also on the 15th, we have the newest release by Sandy Jones called The Trade-Off. It says, for Stella, the deputy director of The Globe, the choice has always been clear. It doesn't matter how low she has to stoop, getting the best story is what she's built her reputation on. For Jess, The Globe's rookie reporter, the story stops when the truth does. She knows that the dirty tricks of the tabloids will be hard to overturn. And when a celebrity is hounded by the globe and pays the ultimate price, Jess wonders just how much Stella and the paper are responsible. Determined to show the world what the tabloid is capable of, Jess will do whatever it takes to uncover the truth, but she needs to watch her back because someone else is prepared to kill to bury it. So it definitely sounds like this is going to be a hard look into like reporters in general and how far they go to get a story and how like invasive that they can be and would they be willing to kill for that story. So right off the bat, synopsis isn't doing too terribly much for me, but I do like the concept of looking looking into how far a journalist would go to get a story. So like I said, if you have been a fan of Sandy Jones in the past and you are interested in her new release, it comes out on the 15th. And the final one that I want to talk to you about today that is coming out on the 15th is actually Alice Hoffman's newest release called The Invisible Hour. I actually have never read anything by Alice Hoffman. Of course, I do know of her Practical Magic series and everything like that. So she is definitely a popular, well-known speculative fiction author. I did talk about this in the Book of the Month predictions. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you again because the synopsis is a little bit weird. It's based on the Scarlet Letter. So it says, One brilliant June day when Mia Jacob can no longer see a way to survive, power of words save her. The Scarlet Letter was written almost 200 years earlier, but it seems to tell the story of Mia's mother, Ivy, and their life inside the community, an oppressive cult in Western Massachusetts where contact with the outside world is forbidden and books are considered evil. We love a good cult. How could Nathaniel Hawthorne have so perfectly captured the pain and loss that Mia carries inside her? Through a journey of heartbreak, love, and time, Mia must abandon the rules she was raised with at the community. As she does, she realizes that reading can transport you to other worlds or bring them to you you and that readers and writers affect one another in mysterious ways. She learns that time is more fluid than she can imagine and that love is stronger than any chains that bind you. As a girl, Mia fell in love with a book. Now as a young woman, she falls in love with a brilliant writer as she makes her way back in time. But what if Nathaniel Hawthorne never wrote The Scarlet Letter? And what if Mia Jacob never found it on the day she planned to die? So not only does this have a cult aspect to it, but it definitely sounds like it's going to deal with time travel as our main character is going back in time. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of speculative elements to this one. If you are a fan of Alice Hoffman and her writing, you may want to check this one out. Next, I only have one that I want to talk to you about that's coming out on the 22nd. I'm not going to say much about it because it is the 11th in the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter, and it is called After That Night. Now, I wanted to mention this first of all because I know a lot of people like myself are big fans of Karen Slaughter. They are a big fan of the Will Trent series, and if you are not familiar, this sounds like it's actually going to be another crossover with the characters from the Grant County series, which came out before the Will Trent series. But I do know that this is actually going to feature Sarah Linton. If you guys have read the Grant County series, you will 
will know that throughout that series there is mentioned a very terrible tragic event that happened to Sarah in her life and I believe that this is going to go back to that time and that there are going to be like other things related to what happened to Sarah. So even though this is not a book that I can get to anytime soon because like I said it's the 11th in the Will Trent series and I haven't even started the Will Trent series I am so excited to know that there are going to be future crossovers in that series. So if you are already into the Will Trent series if you love it just know that the newest installment in that series comes out on the 11th. All right and now we are in the final few releases that are coming out on August 29th. We have some more heavy hitters of course starting with Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. We all know that I'm a little trepidatious about Alice Feeney ever since the disaster that was Daisy Darker but I really love the synopsis of this one and I did enjoy Rock Paper Scissors so I may be willing to give this a try. This is another book of the month prediction that I had in that video but there's quite a lot going on here and a lot of like multiple characters and timelines that are happening so I'm gonna go ahead and just read this one to you again. It says 20 years after a baby is stolen from a stroller a woman is murdered in a care home. The two crimes are somehow linked and a good bad girl may be the key to discovering the truth. Edith may have been tricked into a nursing home but at 80 years young she's planning her escape. Patience works there cleaning messes and bonding with Edith a kindred spirit but Patience is lying to Edith about almost everything. Edith's own daughter Cleo won't speak to her and someone new is about to knock on Cleo's door and their intentions aren't good. With every reason to distrust each other the women must solve a mystery with three suspects two murders and one victim. They do they might just find out what happened to the baby who disappeared the mother who lost her and the connections that bind them. So off the bat it seems a little bit chaotic because you have multiple people. Edith who's in a nursing home, Patience who works there and talks to Edith, and you have Edith's own daughter Cleo but we don't know how exactly that is connected to the baby that was taken from a stroller 20 years prior. Like I said it sounds like there is a lot going on here. I was really intrigued by the premise when I first read it so this could be one that I could convince myself to read and give Alice Sweeney another shot. Another one coming out on the 29th that I am personally pretty hyped for is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. She wrote Miracle Creek which was a very strong legal thriller that I really enjoyed. I thought it was clever and well put together and this is definitely a family drama but there is also a mystery aspect to it. It follows a biracial Korean American family and what happens when the father of that family goes missing. It's as full of shocking twists and fascinating questions of love language race and human connection. Happiness Falls is a mystery, a family drama, and a novel of profound philosophical inquiry. With all the powerful storytelling she brought to her award-winning debut Miracle Creek, Angie Kim turns the missing person story into something wholly original creating an indelible tale of a family who must go to remarkable lengths to truly understand one another. So I am down for it. A family drama, obviously some complex character relationships, a mystery, a missing father, secrets are going to be revealed, and I am down to read this one. So I'm very much looking forward to this one again coming out at the end of August on the 29th. And the very last book that I'm going to mention in this video is also one that I'm not going to be talking much about because it is the fourth in the series but I wanted to mention it for all of those who are fans of the Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The fourth book The Brothers Hawthorne is actually coming out on the 29th. I personally have not read the Inheritance Games series so I can't speak intelligently about that or how this connects but just a brief read through of the synopsis I don't necessarily think you have to 100% read the trilogy in order to go into this one. I think that this might be the start of a separate series or maybe it's just considered the fourth book in the Inheritance Games series series but it could be like one that ends after this I don't know. It does follow two brothers Hawthorne, Grayson and Jameson. It says drawn into twisted games on the opposite side of the globe. With the help of their brothers and the girl who inherited their grandfather's fortune they must dig deep to decide who they want to be and what each of them will sacrifice to win. So if you have loved the series and you are interested in this continuation again it comes out on the 29th. All right everyone that is it. Those are some of the top releases I have found that are coming out in August. Again not meant to be a comprehensive list at all. So if there are some August releases that you are incredibly hyped for please be sure to leave that information down below and let other people know so that they can put those books on their radar as well. Or if you've made it to the end of the video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of family emoji. There are a lot of complicated family dramas coming out in August and I'm kind of living for it. So go ahead and leave me like a fun family emoji. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to see you and connect with you in one of those next videos. Or if you would love to connect with me on any other platform, I always leave my Goodreads, Instagram, and Instagram. Instagram threads linked down below and I would sure of course love to talk to you on those platforms as well. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.